Welcome to this Jeremy Bamber White House Farm podcast. In this episode, we will explain the prosecution and defence case. First, you'll hear the Crown's case against Jeremy Bamber, who on the 28th of October 1986 was convicted on a 10 to 2 majority verdict of murdering his parents, Neville and June Bamber, his sister Sheila Caffell and her six year old twins on the 7th of August 1985. The family were shot and killed at Neville and June's home, where Sheila and her sons were staying, and this happened sometime during the night. The trial judge, Justice Drake, imposed a minimum term of 25 years, which was increased retrospectively to a whole life term in 1988 by Douglas Hurd. The prosecution's case at trial was that Jeremy Bamber had planned and carried out the killings. Then we'll cover the defence case, which was that Miss Caffell, who had a history of mental health problems, killed her parents and children with a rifle before killing herself with the same weapon. The prosecution case at trial was that Jeremy Bamber, motivated by greed, planned and carried out the killings. Having left White House Farm at about 10pm on Tuesday, the 6th of August 1985, he had returned by bicycle taking a route which avoided the main roads in the early hours of the following morning. He had the means and knowledge to enter the house through the downstairs bathroom window. He then took the rifle, with the sound moderator attached, which he had left out deliberately earlier in the evening, and made his way upstairs to where members of his family were sleeping. June Bamber was shot while still lying in bed, but had managed to get up and walk a few steps before she collapsed and died by the main bedroom door. Neville Bamber was also shot in the bedroom, but was able to get downstairs into the kitchen, where there was a violent struggle before he was shot a number of times in the head. The killer shot the children in their beds as they slept. Sheila Caffell, probably sedated from her medication, was killed in her parents' bedroom. The prosecution argued that Jeremy Bamber then set about arranging the scene to give the impression that Sheila had murdered her family before taking her own life. The Crown suggested that when Jeremy Bamber discovered Sheila would not have been able to reach the trigger to kill herself with a silencer attached, he removed the silencer and put it in a downstairs cupboard after placing a Bible on Sheila's body because she had been preoccupied with religion in the weeks before her death. The Crown claimed that he used the telephone in the kitchen to dial his own number, left the phone off the hook to support the alibi he would later rely upon, which was that his father called him to say Sheila had gone crazy and had hold of the gun. He then left the house, climbing out of the kitchen window, banging it from the outside to drop the catch back into position, and then cycled home on his mother's bicycle. Shortly after 3am, he telephoned his girlfriend, Julie Mugford, before calling the police at 3.26am and then drove slowly to the farm to meet the police. The defence answered the prosecution case by stating that the witnesses who spoke of Jeremy Bamber's hatred and dislike of his family were either lying or had misinterpreted what he had said and that Julie Mugford, the jilted girlfriend, had also lied to prevent anybody else being with the man she loved. They argued that nobody had seen Jeremy Bamber cycling to and from the farm in the early hours of the 7th of August, and that his car had not moved from outside his house after arriving home from work until he left to meet the police at the farm as they requested. That there was no probative value in the evidence about the windows, as Jeremy had used them a number of times in the past to enter the house and a hacksaw blade discovered underneath a window was also not of value. The defence argued that Sheila Caffell had killed her parents and children and then taken her own life for the following reasons. 1. She had a very serious mental illness and it was known that individuals with her condition with no previous history of violence had killed. 2 that Sheila had expressed thoughts of an ability to kill her own children. 3. Those who carried out altruistic killings had been known to indulge in ritualistic behaviour before committing suicide, and that Sheila may have put the moderator away 
changed her clothes and washed before committing suicide. This explained the absence of blood staining, the minimum traces of lead on her hands, and absence of sugar from the kitchen floor on her feet. Four. Having lived on a farm and been present at shoots, she would have understood how to load and operate the rifle. 5. The gun, the magazines and the rounds of ammunition had been left out in the room, where Jeremy had heard an argument about placing the children in foster care. 6. Jeremy had no obvious signs of injury to support that he had been in a struggle with his father, and no blood-stained clothing belonging to him was recovered. 7. The doctor and the first senior investigating officer had all proceeded on the basis that Sheila Caffell was responsible for the killings. 8. There was a possibility that the blood in the moderator was not from Sheila Caffell, but represented a mixture of Neville and June Bamber's blood. 9. When Jeremy Bamber received a call from his father, alerting him to the unfolding events, he had not initially appreciated the seriousness of the situation. Now, over 35 years after the tragedies, and with a detailed study of the case material, accessed by the defence in 2011, the defence case at trial can be shown to have been influenced by the scale of the non-disclosure, and a team that were not prepared to robustly challenge the evidence the Crown presented. This series of podcasts will examine each of the Crown's arguments and suggestions placed before the jury in order to reveal the true events they were unaware of and which the defence failed to explore as they should have done. In the next episode, we will present a timeline of evidence which has enabled the construction of a sequence of events that happened inside the farmhouse on that night. <laughs>